What's up, Ipa fans? This is Raphael from C Manga, and I'm joined by Reese. Yo, what's up? And we're here to give you a review of this week's episode of Hajimina Ipo Rising 23 The Courage to Live. And my gosh, this was depressing. Could they make this episode any sadder than it actually was? I really don't think they can, man. <laughs> Everyone was there going on like, oh, the end of the Takamura fight brought them to tears. I did not want to see what this episode did to those people. <laughs> it really was a tearjerker. I mean, the amount of like themes and, you know, moments in this that were just good. Oh, like, it was just full of turmoil. Yeah, really and truly. Whoever like, says that Ippo's a light-hearted kind of like series, they can eat their words just by watching this. <laughs> <laughs> this can cause so many people to just break down for a little while, man. Mm. So, you know, usually after you finish watching these episodes, you're just like, yeah, I feel so hyped. That was so awesome. This one, man. You feel kind of depressed. Yeah, it, it left you with a bit of, like, you know, depression after. And you're just like, gosh, what's going to happen? I mean, like you said, before, we were mentioning before this, like, it left a bit of hope, but it also had, you know, that kind of underlying sadness. It's like, what could actually happen? What's going to happen next? Like, Yeah, there just it, wasn't enough of them rays of sunshine that you yeah. get. <laughs> I mean, it's just like all oh, overcast, cloudy skies, man. Mm. And that was a reoccurring theme in this whole episode, especially with, you know, the whole sunflower um, yeah. symbol. Yeah, so, yeah. Want to get into this one then? Talk yeah, about let's that. break it down. So, first things first, Nakota, my gosh, um, the guy, man, punch drunk syndrome is not a nice thing to have. And in this episode, you can just see it literally chipping away at him. Not only yeah. physically, but mentally, it's just destroying him, and it's so sad to see. Yeah, man, so for the episode, obviously, got, like, the first thing was not being able to grip the cup, and he just dropped it. Mm. It's like, what the hell, was going on? Why can't I grip properly? Hands frozen. Then next thing, it's like, his eyesight starts going, you see, he gets his nice little job as a, what are they called? Pedicab? Uh, pedicab, yeah. Yeah, he's said, like, you know, pedicabs, so you can earn some money, pay some pay rent and stuff. It's like, guy can't even drive in a straight line. Because it's like he thinks he's driving a straight line, but in fact he's not. He's all over the place. Mm. Then obviously, what's the other ones, man? You got like the memory loss. Yeah. You end up buying Yuki some a nice little dress. End up buying it for her twice. You didn't even remember buying it. What the hell? And it was just shocking, like you know how generally convinced that he's like, I've never seen you wear that before. Like, where did you get that? It's yeah. like there's no way I bought you that. Like, can you imagine how much that? Like, of a mental strain that must be for that guy, you know, like to feel like a piece of his memory was just lost ju- that easily. Exactly, and then it got worse, man. He said when he broke down with the headache. Good, that that part was He's really depressing. Up inside. Mm. Oh my god, he just looked like he was gonna die just there and then. Yeah, like his head was just gonna explode. All, all those is like you know, like the veins and stuff, like the convulsions and gosh, it was. Oh man, sad to see. Exactly, man. It's sad to see that in animated form. If you saw it in real life, man, you'd have it's even a worse. Attack. It's very bad. That is not something. That's just not a kind of nice mm. subject to kind of be bringing up. No chance. Damn, man. So, yeah, Nakota, he's screwed, man. It's just horrible mm. watching someone just go through all that. It's different. It's not nice. And that's obviously one bit of sadness. Then you got the other bit, <laughs> which is finding out that Yuki has friggin' radiation poisoning. Don't know how long she's got left to live. Gosh, uh, I could Could you imagine the turmoil she's going through? I mean, she's a survivor from the Hiroshima bombing, and you know she's basically come to Tokyo to find some sort of hope and happiness, like in terms of how much time she has left to live. And yeah. it's just like you go there, and then you just see like this guy, this freaking massive monster of a, a boxer and a soldier. And that just must break her. And the only thing that's helping her, you know, to live on and have strength is um, Kamagaya Nakoto. Yeah. So I swear, man, the whole sunflower analogy for her was perfect for this entire episode. Yeah, I agree. Spot on. You know, so obviously they they see her as a little kind of like sunflower ray of hope and all that stuff. And it's like Mm. like the entire episode, the sunflowers are just dying. You know, so it's over. Yeah. Yeah. And then, obviously, she said that little line about how, oh, yeah, the sunflowers are going to be leaving loads of seeds behind, so next year like, they'll be able to sprout again and stuff. And it's like, that was just kind of perfect, because it's the same thing which she's doing there. She's just, like, leaving all these happy memories for him, mm. like, after she's passing. 
So it's like, damn. He was very well done, man. You know what I mean? It's just like heart clenching. <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. So obviously there was a couple little ray of hope moment, like you know, moments where like you see Nakota taking Yuki out, like mm. seeing the sights and everything is all nice and happy. But still, man, for most of the episode it was frigging overcast, raining. Everyone's getting soaked. It wasn't nice. <laughs> it was. It was like you know that kind of downcast atmosphere. Everything was just depressing, and it just left you thinking, "What hope is there?" Exactly, man. It's make matters even worse. There's a friggin' love triangle. Good. It's like, how much more sadness do you want to pump into this bloody episode? <laughs> so you got Nakota, he likes Yuki. Yuki's liking Kamigawa. Kamigawa likes Yuki as well, but he doesn't want to ruin his friendship. It's like, jeez. It's one of those, you know, those dramas or, you know, those fanfics that people like to write. And it's just like, ah. It's just going around too many ways, man. It's like, Jesus. Like, like I was saying, it? it's like this episode here, they just like hit you with the sadness and then don't stop. <laughs> just more and more and more and more and more. They just pile it on. Yeah. So they wanted tears from this episode. I definitely. You know, they succeeded. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just think like the la- you know, the final bit of um, touching on the this depressing cake was when Nakota basically said that he's arranged to fight... Um, you know, um, Ralph Anderson. Yeah. And he, and then he said, this will be my last match in the ring. I'm going to retire after. And it's literally like he was begging Yuki to come with him. Like, after, because he, he also knew, you know, about the radiation poisoning, but you can tell it's for um, his own sake as well. Yeah. Because he's like, she doesn't have much longer to live. He doesn't mm. know how long he will last. So it's kind of like, yeah, we can... Help like, each other, yeah. yeah, out. Just go out together kind of thing. Good. Oh, man, too much sadness. Then to make matters worse, man, the whole fight with Anderson, it's like, you want to get hyped for it, but it's like, you really can't. Yeah, because uh, it's just like that lurking handicap. I mean, it's a literally on and off switch. It can strike at any moment, and the moment it strikes could be like be the difference between life and death, which Kamagaya has said. Yeah. And as much as they're assholes to each other, you can tell they're brothers. So he he's like in disarray, like, oh my god, is this guy an idiot? It's like, how the flip could he go into this that death match? Exactly, man. And to make matters worse, yeah, we finally figured out Anderson is eight weight classes above them. <sighs> eight. It's like Jesus Christ, that's worse than Ippo trying to take on friggin' Takamura. Takamura, yeah, and that's so six, Anderson's six. a friggin' weight class above Takamura, and they are a weight class lower than Ippo. That's madness right there. The, the weight the weight difference is ridiculous. And the fact of the matter is, what makes matters worse is like, you know, in modern times, most people know certain skills in boxing. You know, they know how to box. Kamagaya and um, Nakota are prize fighters. They street fight in terms of boxing. So they're not only fighting someone who's eight weight classes above them, he's a skilled boxer, much more advanced than exactly. them. So, yeah, that he even when Kamagaya said in the episode to, um, earlier... Um, with um what's his name dan kenichi yeah. yeah he it's like we both got our asses handed to him two on one in the street exactly so you know what that's saying that like, in terms of the skill level that like, it's very hard to fight this man but speaking of skill level though man it was kind of cool actually seeing like nakota's fighting style mm. you know you see him and kamigawa doing a little spa thing man nakota is basically he's basically like miata he is the old school or olden day Miata. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of like Miata and Ippo, those two. Because mm. obviously Kamigawa is pretty much Ippo. Definitely. You can definitely see that, man, he's... characteristic-wise and all that stuff. And the straightforward point, yeah, yeah, yeah. your straightforward style. And then Nakota is pretty much like Miata. You see all this footwork, like, freaking Kamigawa's like, oh, I can't even touch you. Mm. It's pretty cool. It was, it was really good to see that. And uh, to elaborate on that, Kamigawa pretty much stated that if any three of us were to fight um, Ralph, he said um, Dakota would have the best chance because his natural talent, skill, and wild nature is just like otherworldly. This guy has got some rare skill that none of them lot have. And you know, I love the image that he had in the background when they were saying that, man. You know, Dakota's eyes kind of like all white, all like glowing, you know, got the yeah. glowing thing, and then you got the light, light streak coming off of him. Mm. That doesn't kind of vanish. That it was bad. bad. I liked it. It was badass. It was cool. Mm. 
So yeah, Nakota is basically getting in the ring with friggin' Ralph Anderson, trying to break the guy's the gloating bastard streak. Mm-hmm. Man's got friggin' six skulls. So like, yep, there's so many Japanese I've defeated. I'm amazing. It's like, damn. So the whole friggin' like build up to that was horrible, though, man. It was. It had a sense of dread in it. Yeah, because you got the whole thing of like Kamigawa saying about it's got, it's a life or death battle now. Yeah. And you're seeing him friggin', you know. In his whole punch drunk state, just trying to calm himself down, he couldn't even wrap up his hands for God's sake. Mm. He's there trying to use his teeth, and it still was he still couldn't do it properly. So it's like, damn, scary. And but, then not, when they finally step in the ring, you've got this venom of, of a guy just towering him, and he all um, Nakota can think about is Yuki finally getting there. And all you're just thinking is, my God, this is going to end terribly. They're going to, like, you know, they're rushing to get there. They're going to get there and see him On the bloodied floor. and beaten. Yeah, that's but what I was fact, expecting. <laughs> but in fact, what did we see? Ralph is down and that he's just... <laughs> Man's taking a knee. <laughs> and we just see him, like, cheekily look around. He's just like, oh, you guys, you're finally here. End. <laughs> exactly, man. But you know what? All this is kind of like... False. It's just, yeah, showing you exactly how this is going to go, this fight, man. Mm. It's the fact that that punch drunk state can come on at any point. You know, it's like a sec- if that hits him, yeah, when Ralph is fighting him, there's a chance Nakota could die. Well, obviously we know he's not going to die, but, you know. <laughs> That's how, yeah, I get what you mean. That's how serious the situation is. It's like yeah. literally on a thin rope, so. It's kind of scary, man. Because so, obviously we know he comes out fine. Because obviously mm. he's around in normal times. Still, it's a yeah, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but still, it's kind of yeah. still a bit kind of like scary and horrible to think about. Exactly. But yeah, man. Like I said, episodes. I gotta admit, though, I did enjoy it. Yeah, it, despite it being freaking heart wrenching and tear jerking, it was an enjoyable episode. It was very well done. And as you said, we don't, the whole sunflower analogy, all those kind of things they, you know, put in there. Yeah. I feel, I feel like they did it really well. Yeah, I mean, they're really emphasising things. Mm. So that kind of just really building up the relationship between them two, which is nice. And then showing you, like, why they are the way they are today. Yep. It's been good. So, yeah, I think that there's pretty much the episode, did it? Yep. Did you cry as much as we did? <laughs> <laughs> that is the question. <laughs> How many comments can we get with just tears? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, that pretty much wraps us up from us, guys. You know the usual thing to do. Let us know what you thought about this episode with your comments below. Did it make you sad? Did you not care as much? Did it make you cry even more than the end of the Sakamura fight? That's the big one. Mm. Yeah, you can let us know those in that comment box below. As usual, um, leave a little rating behind. We'd like to know how we're doing. And don't forget to check out the other stuff we're doing on the channel. So we will catch you next week. For episode 24, Tekken. Tekken. Iron Fist. Let's go. Okay. (laughs) All right, guys. We'll catch you then. See you then.